Good evening and welcome to the Temecula Community Services Commission meeting for April 12th, 2021. We are meeting virtually. I'm uh, Chair Eric Levine and I am going to call this meeting to order. And as usual, let's start with our flag ceremony. And today, it looks like Commissioner Sizemore will lead us in the flag salute. So please mute yourself if you if not already, I will do. Thank you, Eric. Oliver Wendell Holmes said it best. One flag, one hand, one heart, one land, one nation evermore. Fellow commissioners, city staff, and those viewing our meeting virtually, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Please forgive me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. I am drawing a blank. One nation <laughs> under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Okay, I have to admit now, I guess when I'm doing my cut my uh, Boy Scout meetings and I, I let the scouts do it and I just sit there and move my lips. That's okay. It's a mulligan for 2021. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I have to say I'm shocked, <laughs> but it happens to the best of us. So no worries. Please don't tell on me, Eric. <laughs> no worries. All right, Bea, would you like to lead us in the roll call? Yes, sir. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Bea Barnett, your community services superintendent, and it's an honor to be serving as your commission secretary this evening, and we will begin with the roll call. Commissioner Krzyzewski. Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner Audie. Here. Commissioner Sizemore. Oh, I'm here. Vice Chair Ruiz. Good evening, I'm here. And Chairperson Livy. I am here. Thank you. All present. Thank you, Bea. And in terms of public comments, do we have any this evening? No, sir, we have not received any public comments as of this time. Well, and in turn, I will dispense with the reading of the rules and we can move right into division reports. And I understand Cassandra will be leading us off tonight. Go ahead when you're ready, Cassandra. That is correct. All right, one second while I share my screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bea. Thank you and good evening, Community Services Chairperson Eric Levine, commissioners and fellow staff. My name is Cassandra Ambries and I am the Community Services Specialist for the City of Temecula's Community Services Department, Human Services Division. And tonight I have the honor of presenting the Community Services Commission Report for you all. Tonight's Commission Report will be a recap of all of the March happenings, um, as well as a preview of what's to come this month. Alrighty, so We'll kick things off with aquatics, where the splash pad at Eagle Sore Park opened on March 23rd and will be open and staffed Friday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. through June 6th. Summer hours for the splash pad will begin on June 8th. In other aquatics news, March 20th was the first tryout clinic, which helped 19 potential employees prepare for the hiring process for both lifeguard and senior lifeguard positions with tryouts on Sunday, April 11th, which was yesterday. Um, evening lap swim also began at the CRC on April 5th, providing an additional swimming opportunity from 5 to 8.30 and will continue through May 27th. And that was 5 to 8.30 p.m. In March, the staff were trained on response to first aid emergencies, including severe bleeding and splinting as well as multi-rescuer response to an unconscious patient. 
The aquatic attendance in March included 1,745 participants in lap swim, 88 participants in water exercise and master's classes, and 48 participants in lifeguard and water safety instruction classes. All right, and I have a pretty small uh, laptop screen. I have one of those small ones. It was great for college, um, <laughs> not so much for reading. So I threw on my glasses. Um, there we go. So let's see, contract classes for March included pickleball, tennis, pre-K fitness, grizzly cubs, cheer, field hockey, and ballet folklorico. There were a total of 254 participants in the contract classes for March. This month's contract classes will include grizzly cubs, pre-K fitness, cheer, busy bags, that ballet folklorico again, field hockey, junior sports, tennis, yoga, pickleball, karate, cooking, and baking, as well as art and photo classes. You can view all of the classes online at www.temeculaca.gov forward slash register. Um, the spring break camps, yes, you can draw, Bigfoot's crazy cartoon camp, Bigfoot's cartooning class, and spring baking camps were full of fun and a great way for our local youth to enjoy their spring vacation. In addition, the Temecula Cares 21 Day Challenge took place in March and incorporated family fitness, virtual art classes, and yoga, among other fun activities to promote the wellness of the mind, body, and spirit. All righty. So now on to the Community Recreation Center. Um, they have been keeping Temecula teens engaged with various activities, including the Teen Zone Monthly Theme Box and the Teen Zone Tasty Tuesdays on Zoom. The Teen Zone has a successful St. Patrick's Day theme box meetup and sold out of boxes for March with five teens on the wait list. The virtual meetup was led by CRC Recreation Assistants, Michael Parker and Lauren Munzenmeyer. They guided participants in painting St. Patrick's Day rocks, a leprechaun drawing challenge and St. Patrick's Day trivia. Let's see, all 10 participants had fun making the crafts alongside staff and this month's April showers theme box is already sold out. The first day of Tasty Tuesday went really well. Tasty Tuesday, for those of you who don't know, is a free cooking lesson program offered via Zoom every other week on Tuesdays. Chef Michael Parker and sous chef Lauren Munzenmeyer taught teens how to make classic pancakes from scratch and staff hosted two sessions with five teens each and there are plans to add more slots for future sessions. The teens and staff had a great time cooking together via Zoom. Now on to homeless outreach. In March, property owners of Empire Creek, which is the creek area between Tower Plaza and DLR Drive, began cleanup of their property. Perimeter fencing cameras and no trespassing signs will be installed. And after nesting season, they will also remove any of the non-native trees in the area, which will help clear away the overgrown brush. In outreach services, the swag stats from March show that there were 17 new clients and five street and five street exits, with two of those street exits being placed in permanent housing. The year-to-date street exits are now at a total of 16 with the SWAG and the city clients combined. The one-year extension for outreach services with SWAG will be going to council tomorrow, March 13th. SWAG, city staff, and homeless outreach team have been conducting joint weekly encampment visits and inspections. And another couple of items to note are that the winter shelter has closed to all but those actively working with SWAG and those individuals can continue to stay until the 15th. There will also be no trespassing signs installed on the facing of bridges throughout the city to assist PD with enforcement of these areas. So now on to inclusion and senior services. Um, which is my division. So I have a little extra for you all tonight. All of our inclusion programs have still been offered throughout the pandemic, albeit virtually via Zoom. Our program participants are able to engage and connect with friends and city staff. And we've even managed to strengthen bonds with many of our program participants. In March, our Skip Kids enjoyed a spring themed virtual scavenger hunt, a follow along sunflower drawing tutorial and a reading of Pete the Cat, the Great Leprechaun Chase. On a separate day, participants also enjoyed playing Pictionary and decorating eggs with the staff using the shaving cream method. If you haven't decorated eggs with the shaving cream method, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun and a lot of mess. 
Um, March High Hopes was a game night with Wheel of Fortune and participants had a blast feeling like they were on a game show. It was great. There was so much laughs, so much um, just good friendly competition. It was wonderful. April 2nd um, was also World Autism Awareness Day. Each year, the city joins hundreds of other communities throughout the world in spreading kindness and increasing autism awareness during the month of April through various events, programs, and activities. Although this year we are doing things a little different, we are still excited to celebrate and recognize autism awareness during our virtual monthly High Hopes event being held on Friday, April 16th where we will have color, movement, and conversations, celebrating our differences and embracing our commonalities. Everyone is welcome to attend. And um, onto our Youth Advisory Council. So after they received a training from the Riverside University Health Systems on mental health and suicide awareness and prevention, our YAC students decided on a campaign project to follow up the training. During the month of March, YAC students held their two-day virtual self-care fair event where they led various self-care activities for their peers. The activities included a DIY slime tutorial, drawing and journaling tutorials, as well as yoga and meditation practices. In addition, all participants received mental health resources via email, which were provided by RUHS. These resources included a teen help card, which in, um, with inc included information on teen help services like counseling, runaway services, and mental health hotline numbers. Our YAP students did a really phenomenal job of planning and leading these activities, and we could not be more proud of them, and especially in promoting that wellness and self-care. March was also the start of the Global Citizens Horticulture and Viticulture Vocational Spring Session. The program began on March 23rd and will continue to take place every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. through April 29th. Viticulture, for those of you who don't know, um, we call it that for short, is a uniquely structured uh, class to teach the study of winemaking, vineyard maintenance, garden cultivation, and professional development. All of this is done in a close-knit classroom setting, and we've been able to continue with this program even virtually. On April 1st, during our morning icebreaker, we discussed Autism Awareness Month by sharing things that we love to do and things that make us unique as a way to celebrate differences. Our community-based setting allows for a safe space and trusting environment to hold discussions like this and to share insight with one another. During our last session of viticulture, we were able to do some hybrid classes, which were done in a socially distanced outdoor classroom setting with some students attending virtually if they chose. And we hope to be able to do a few more hybrid classes this session, especially when our program participants engage in the FRIEND project as part of their learning experience. The FRIEND project stands for Fostering Relationships, Inclusion, Equity, and Neighborhood Diversity. This project is part of the rebranding of Friendship Park, formerly Paula Park, as an inclusive and diverse park. We are currently underway with projects which are uh, a wall mural, we have a mosaic and friendship benches. And we are uh, really looking forward to the Community Services Commission and community members alike to be a part of this project with opportunities for involvement in both the wall mural and the mosaic. Um, in the mosaic, it would be the border pieces and we'd have tile kits for that. Uh, we will have dates for these projects soon and we'll keep you all informed. In senior news, our curbside senior meal program remains fairly consistent with about 120 to 130 participants each week. To date, staff have distributed over 44,000 meals to seniors in need during this pandemic. And also during these drive-through programs, we've been able to um, really get to know our seniors quite a bit. We've um, strengthened bonds with our you know, existing seniors that we had pre-pandemic, and we've also gotten to know so many new faces. So it's been a really wonderful opportunity. And I know some of our wonderful commissioners have also helped out um, at these drive-through meal programs. Um, our MPSC SOS shuttle services program operates weekly and provides seniors with curb-to-curb -curb transportation from their homes to the grocery store and then back home. Seniors who don't have access to transportation are able to do essential shopping and regain independence. A lot of our seniors um, have you know, no form of transportation. So this has been a really great service to them to be able to uh, go out and actively participate in the community. And even if it's just getting their groceries and doing these essential things, but, you know, not being so isolated um, and having that freedom and that um, independence kind of reclaimed has been great. In the month of March, uh, the Mary Phillips Senior Center also celebrated all of the March birthdays with the drive-through birthday celebration. 
Seniors received a card signed by staff as well as hand sanitizer and blankets and flowers and goodies from sponsors Peru Meta Dental and Humana. From December 1st through March 31st, the Senior Center was operating as a warm center for vulnerable individuals, seniors, the disabled, and others in need of temporary relief from the cold. The warm center season is officially over and the cool center season will begin on June 1st. Throughout the vaccine rollout, um, MPSC staff have been keeping seniors informed with updates regarding the COVID-19 vaccine through outreach calls and weekly information sheets distributed at our curbside senior meal program. March was also the kickoff of another wonderful program, which is the AARP Tax Aid Program. This program offers free in-person tax preparation and it started on March 5th. The program will be continuing through April 30th and appointments are held every Monday and Friday. And uh, this program is by appointment only. Alrighty, and now we go on to the library that is doing so many wonderful things. Last week was National Library Week and the library held a National Library Week scavenger hunt. There's a lovely photo there that can be seen as well. The library is currently open at 25% capacity and there are 10 recorded programs with 2,289 views. Um, the library just has these awesome numbers. In March, there were 20,877 circulated items, 5,896 self-checkout items, 2,345 questions and a 6,500 door count. What I thought was really fun was that there were 613 children that participated in the in and out reading program where children are able to read five books and then they'll receive a certificate for a free hamburger from California's favorite burger joint. March also saw Wi-Fi wi usage for 840 people at the library. Now on to parks and facilities. The Margarita Michael Mike Nagar Community Park has a hockey, tennis, pickleball court, um, LED light retrofit that's on track for July of this year, along with a new park sign construction underway. Friendship Park saw resurfacing then to the basketball and tennis courts, and we can anticipate a May completion of the resurfacing. Friendship Park also has a new park sign construction underway with an anticipated completion in May. The Sam Hicks Monument Park Perimeter Fencing Project is anticipated to begin in May. So May seems like a busy month for the parks, right? <laughs> in regard to uh, playground replacement updates, the Winchester Creek Park construction is completed and the playground is open. Friendship Park is still under construction, but completion is anticipated for, you guessed it, May. Sports and park rangers in the sports world, all youth sports are up and running at full capacity with baseball that began in March and youth soccer practice on April 5th. Games will be played starting April 17th and the city's adult softball league was scheduled to start today, April 12th. Field space is at a premium without the opportunity of additional field space from Temecula Valley Unified School District. And this has allowed sports to think outside of the box and they have opened up Kent Hintergart Park for reservation, um, for rental groups for practice only starting this month. The park rangers are staying very busy with continued changes to CDC guidelines, homeless activity increase, pump track activity, and day-to-day -day education and enforcement of park rules. Since daylight savings, more activity later in the day at the parks has also been noticed. In addition to more visitors staying in the parks later, there has also been increased activity in the afternoon due to schools reopening. And really, that concludes my report. If anyone has any questions at this time, I will be happy to answer those now. Awesome, thank you, Cassandra. Uh, really nice report out. And um, I appreciated the, the flair that you spun on it for the inclusive and senior services. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with uh, Commissioner Krzyzewski. Well, thank you, Cassandra, for your report. Very, very informative. Um, I did have a, a few questions and some comments for you. Uh, first one is, what, what is Grizzly Cubs exactly? Um, is that under the contract classes? 
Commissioner Krasnowski. Yes. That's yes, one of our. Yeah. I saw Grizzly yeah. Cubs on there a few times, and I was just curious as to what that is. Yeah, that's one of our early childhood education programs. So it's like uh, preschool aged, but it's not a certified preschool program. It's an enrichment class. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Um, other than that, I was wondering how uh, moving into the orange tier is going to impact our programming here in the city. Um, I know that libraries are supposed to be opening up to 50% capacity. Isn't, isn't that correct? Um, so for that, I would have to defer to Erica, but for us um, at the Senior Center and with Inclusion Services, we're following guidelines from the California Department on Aging as well as the county. So um, we'll be, you know, as, when we get more direction from them, we'll kind of have a little bit more knowledge on when we'll be reopening as well. Okay, how about for other programming? Are we going to see some more in-person programming or is it still going to be mostly virtual for the time being? I'll jump in now, <laughs> Cass. Uh, I, I think not just with us, but uh, what you're seeing throughout the region is everyone's kind of taking the measured approach. Um, we're doing programming right now. What, what we're doing as it relates to going between tiers is continuing with our ramping up with personnel and bringing personnel and staffing back on board. Um, when possible, um, we will increase our you know, our capacity and occupancy. Um, but right now, um, we're just looking at bringing folks back on board um, and then taking a look, to be quite honest, to see what's going to be continuing the virtual um, fashion, if we can switch to a hybrid or if we can go back to, to things as normal. But it's really, I mean, we're going through tears so quickly. Um, you know, first there was no movement. We were in purple for the longest and, you know, then with some political machinations, I guess, you start seeing a lot of reopening, if you will, too. And so we've kind of gone through some of the, through some of the, uh, the tiers. And so you, what you won't see is like from one week, um, you know, uh, a lot of changes and, and that's to be um, expected. For example, we're, we're, you know, with youth sports, um, you know, there's activities going on. And I think we did probably start a youth hockey um, today. But tournaments aren't allowed as we get through some, uh, you know, some additional tiers. So to answer your question is you're not going to see a lot of difference between, um, you know, some of the tiers right now. But just kind of internally, what you're seeing is there's a clear understanding that we're headed towards uh, reopening, barring any new strain or um, any spring break kind of outbreak or something like that, which kind of halts the progress. And then with that, you know, we're just bringing personnel back and, um, and starting to ramp up and gear up. So I hope that answers that question. That was perfect. Thank you, Director Hawkins. That was, Thank you. That was perfect. And I know the department does a fantastic job uh, ramping up hiring and, and providing these um, different programs for the, for the city. And, you know, I, 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 I kind of hope that some of the virtual programming will remain even moving forward once things, you know, go back to normal. Because I yeah, think it, if I can, Commissioner, to that point, you know, and what the managers, they do a really good job, and you, you know that from listening to the reports, but kind of even going into um, this whole past year, you know, kind of the charge was, um, you know, we may not have the quantity, but let's focus on the quality, but let's make sure that everyone has the same experience, right? And so you've seen kind of these creative things in each sex, uh, section and division. You've seen like the drive-throughs and, you know, in the human services where we continue the, the meal programs. You've seen the virtual concerts. You've seen contract classes done in a different way and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you've seen some creative things in special events where we did with Here Comes Santa and things like that. What's going to be interesting as, uh, as the managers do their, their assessment to see what was truly successful and what we can retain um, in some cases, the proposition was an either or, right? It's like we couldn't put on a parade, right? So we had to do these things, right? So um, it's going to be kind of this, this calculus, right? It's like, what, what can we retain, um, which adds to, you know, the whole experience, but realistically, given a finite set of resources, what can we do? Because uh, to be quite honest, there are certain things that have been great in over the past year. But 
we just really wouldn't have the resources to do everything, right? Um, I think it'll be challenging to do um, let's get egg um, and then our traditional kind of um, Easter egg hunts and, and things like that at the three different locations. And so um, I know there's been a great reaction and response and that means that we've been very successful. It means like, oh, wow, you know, everyone really loved, excuse me, and bought into what we did, but we're really gonna have to take a look at it, but to the extent possible, whatever we're, we're able to do and if it's been successful, um and if we can continue it we will and if there's a need um that there is this kind of cry for hey let's keep this going and and resources are an, are an issue uh, the council has been supportive um the city manager has been supportive but we, we will also be coming to you as a commission to say hey um if you can lend any support because the community wants it we'll definitely come to you as well Thank you, director. Yeah, no, the Easter egg delivery was amazing. The kids really enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a nice little surprise. So that, that was a terrific program. And then, yeah, it's nice to uh, see sports starting up again. Um, I'm helping assist with the Temecula uh, Soccer Association. So it's fun to be back out on the pitch and, and seeing the kids just enjoying the time out there. So glad to see things opening up. That's all I had for this part. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, let's go to Commissioner Adi. Thank you, Chair. Um, Cassandra, thanks very much for the, especially for the extra details, um, like Chair said, on the um, inclusion and also the friendship, um, the friends program. It was very interesting and um, I'm sure we're all very interested in getting involved as much as we can in that. So, so thanks for giving us the detail on that really good report. Um, I think um, on the in senior inclusives, you know, you mentioned that some of us showed up and I wanna thank um, Vice Chair Reese for inviting us. And um, it was great to see both um, Vice Chair Reese and Commissioner Sizemore at that event, and it was just outstanding. And I want to tell you, Cassandra, you're right. I mean, staff is engaging those seniors um, as family, and it's you know, and it it um, and you can see it in return from the seniors too. That they, they just um, they, they feel like it's you know that 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 staff is a part of their family too. So. Um, outstanding event. Um, and again, thanks for the invite, Vice Chair. Um, on um, the one um, homeless outreach issue, I'd like to ask a question to Mike, I think. Um, it was great to hear that the, the private owners are going to remove those um, trees and, and, um, and overgrowth. Um, my question is, uh, aren't most of the trees in the um, in our creeks and um, and and flood flood plains um, native and, and how do we determine what they are and then I also heard mentioned that we were going to be looking at some removal on the um, Diaz Road section of Marietta Creek um, and was wondering how that was going with the county if that was um, progressing. As far as in the creek, that would that would probably be a question for public works. I wouldn't have an answer to that one. In the Empire Creek area, however, is um, so th they obviously can't touch the uh, native species. Uh, and what they'll have to do is before they cut anything down, they have to do surveys, make sure uh, you know the it's the plants don't have any. Uh, they call it raptors nesting in them, hawks and things like that. Um, but there are uh, quite a few non-native species in there. Whether they'll be able to uh, take them all down um, is, is, I think, still up still in the air. Um, but, uh, but there are quite a few actually that are not native to that area or to this area that they're able to remove. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Thanks again, Cassandra. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Sizemore. Thank you, Chair Levine. Let's see, uh, a couple of questions I had uh, right now. 
Um, the class, is there some somewhere where people can go to find out which of the classes the city is currently offering are being held in person versus virtual? Um, yes, on the community services website where you would go to register for classes, it will tell you for every activity, whether they are virtual or um, in person or hybrid. But if you'd like, I can just get you a, a list and shoot it over to you if that would be more straightforward. Okay, that would be great because I did have someone um, ask me about that this month. Sure, we'd be um, happy to do that. All right, thank you. I wanted to know about the YAC, the Youth Advisory Committee. How are the participants, um, how, are you, how do you find the participants or decide who is participating in that group? Yes, thank you. So for the Youth Advisory Council, um, it is open to all Temecula teens um, who are local high schoolers here. So they um, can apply and they can apply year round. So we usually send out kind of an e-blast e and um, we'll just kind of post about it around the time that school is starting. We usually okay. start about a week after the school year begins in fall mm -hmm. and then we usually end maybe about a week or so before school ends. That way they have time to study for finals and all of that. Um, so really, if there's anyone that's interested in joining the Youth Advisory Council, um, there's they can, you know, give us a call um, at the Senior Center. Um, they can email me or they can find the application on our city website as well. And, okay. um, and then they can email it to me and, um, and we'll get them, we'll get them started and get them going in, in the program. It's a really great group that's been very supportive. Um, you know, they're, they're, I just, I gush over them all the time. They really, truly are so supportive of each other. So it's a wonderful group to be a part of. Oh, awesome. That sounds great. Um, I wanted to ask a question. You mentioned the, I'm going to say this thing correctly, viticulture? Yes, that's correct. Oh, good. I said I did something right. <laughs> uh, the viticulture program. Um, what age group was it? Was that for? I was taking notes and how does one participate in that? That sounds like really cool because I think I'd like to do that. <laughs> so the viticulture program is for 18 years and up. It okay. is, um, you know, primarily intended for our special needs adults group. And so um, they can, we are, I would say the average age range in that group is, you know, mid twenties, um, hmm. early to mid twenties right now. That's our average kind of age range for them, but we welcome, um, you know, anyone 18 years and older. And that program also is just kind of, we'll, um, you know, we'll promote it and send out e-blasts to people who have been involved in the past or anyone who reaches out to us um, about their interest in it. So we have an interest list and um, it is an application process too. So they just submit an application to us. And as long as you know, we have the space for it, we will definitely welcome them into the program. So it's a okay. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful program. Um, they just get so much experience from our local wineries, as well as our community garden. Um, and we've still been able to maintain that even virtually with, um, I call them like virtual field trips. So we do videos of everything that we have growing in the garden and how to cultivate and um, follow along with the grape growing season. And we've also worked with some of our um, community partners at like Wilson Creek Winery and Sparrow to also continue with those virtual field trips. So when it came to harvest time, we were videoing out there too, showing them the process. And so it's been, um, you know, I think it was, I can't remember what department um, sports that said we had to just think outside of the box, you know? Um, and that's definitely true for us too. Yeah, wow. if, if, uh, Commissioner Sizemore, if I can, um, mm -hmm. and Cash, you did a great job of covering that. And maybe we can just um, it, extend the invite, not just to Commissioner Sizemore, but to the entire commission, if they're interested in, um, you know, um, in checking it out. And I think they would get a, a lot out of it. As Cassandra um, mentioned, it really is geared towards our special needs community, just going back, to be quite honest, another brainchild of Mike Nagar, um, going back almost seven years, about six years. Um, Temecula is obviously known for, for wine, um, you know, for wine country, and was looking for additional opportunities that met kind of this area that could engage our special needs population. 
Um, and the original kind of concept was an offshoot of, of the Global Citizens Program, which was spearheaded in conjunction with the city manager's office of Charles Walker and, and, and Abed and her team. And the original concept looked at getting um, stakeholders, as Sparrow Winery was, was mentioned, but also MSJC. Um, and I think um, San Marcos was originally kind of um, approach um, to say, hey, can we do something? Can we uh, develop a curriculum, um, uh, you know, um, and maybe um, uh, implement it um, at, your, at your location? Um, you know, uh, we also looked at a UC Davis uh, model, which is renowned for, for viticulture too. And to be quite honest, we took a look at everything met with, with the players and our response to then council member Nagar was, we can do something like this in house. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, we can do this. Right. And so, um, basically, uh, as again, as Cass kind of outlined, we developed the curriculum after some conversations, got stakeholders, um, and, um, and there you have it. And then um, it's gone from not just kind of the wine um, aspects and learning about viticulture and, and, and great growing too, to um, another component, which was the hospitality and then job opportunities afterwards. And so it's kind of had this progression, but it started with that concept we're glad that uh, we were there at the, uh, you know, at, at the initial stages of it too. But it, it's been very empowering, and and we've seen a lot of success. So anyway, I just wanted to give the the commissioners mm -hmm. a little background because, uh, like uh, like uh, the council, like city manager's office, we're very proud of it, and we've continued it, and 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 you've seen Cass is spearheading that, and and you know the the pandemic didn't stop it. And uh, they've done it in a Zoom and virtual environment and very, very, very proud of, of what they've been able to accomplish. Wow, thank you for all that information, uh, Mr. Hawkins. That, that's, I mean, wow, we have a program like that here in Temecula. That's, that's just amazing. I did wanna thank Cassandra for hosting us um, with uh, Commissioner Ruiz and Odie uh, for, uh, the packing the food for the seniors on that one Friday. That was really neat to get to see. I've raised my children here in Temecula and I always knew there was a senior center, but it wasn't very important to me in that stage of life. And now getting near 50, it's kind of kind of it's nice knowing that it's there. And so I really appreciated that you gave me a tour and showed me everything there is to do there. It's an amazing facility. Um, I know Commissioner Kristefsky already asked about reopening plans. I'm, I'm hoping here soon during the summer, you guys will be able to, to start reopening and bringing the seniors in for their programs. Um, I am happy to see the parks reopening. We left, uh, we just came home this afternoon. I live by Meadows Park and I was like, wow, there's all these cars parked around the park again with uh, the practice fields on the practice on the fields. So it's really great to see that happening in the city again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Commissioner. And uh, we will round up with uh, Vice Chair Ruiz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Cassandra, for your report. Uh, super detailed, love the energy and enthusiasm, uh, especially on a Monday evening. You uh, definitely, uh, definitely brought some some nice energy to the to the table tonight. Um, no questions for you. A couple of comments, and you know we say this every month. When you go last, you end up having to duplicate a couple of things. But I did want to thank commissioners, audience eyes more for coming out to the senior meal distribution. Still one of my favorite events. I think that I've got to do as a commissioner. And um, again, it was seamless. Much nicer weather than the first time I went out. I think it was probably thirty degrees cooler. Uh, than it was last summer, but but it was a great time. Um, and I liked um, seeing, and I've noticed uh, even just in our email reports that we get, um, the additional things that we're able to provide. You know, that day, that day we provided some additional hand sanitizer and some masks, and I've seen some additional food um, and some fresh uh, like vegetables that are, that are being given out. So nice to see the community still contributing to that. And um, while a lot of them did wear masks, you can see it in their eyes and those that didn't wear a mask, the, the smiles of the seniors coming through um, 
wh whether it's their only time out for the week or they're just enjoying some fresh air and seeing some smiling faces uh, from, you know, from the staff, it, it's a great time to see. So really enjoyed that. Um, echo again, comments on sports. I did want to say thank you to the Rangers and staff for, for all their work in getting the sports back. It uh, brings a huge smile to my face to drive around, um, not only at the larger parks, but even the smaller community parks and just see people out there playing, families out there walking again, um, you know, fully utilize what we have here. It's fantastic to see. And then I was going to comment on it later, but since there was a slide here about the about the hot team, uh, I did want to thank Mike Booten. I was able to get out and uh, do a tour um, with the hot team and some members from SWAG. It was actually a pretty busy day. We, had, we were able to come across quite a few people and have some good conversations with them. Completely eye-opening, I will say this, if, if any of the uh, fellow commissioners are ever interested, take Mike up on an opportunity to go out. I know I will definitely be going again. Um, we went to an area that I would have never guessed had homeless or would have been a target area to go to. And um, there's, there's just a lot that goes on. And from, from all ends of the spectrum, we got to see everything. Um, you know, people that are um, struggling and maybe struggling mentally. We saw some of those. We saw people that are, are there by choice that still work. And there's just so many different facets of, of, of what goes on. But being able to spend a couple of hours that day was, was, was really, really cool and eye-opening for me. Uh, to be able to really see what goes on, um, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but but I think we had a pretty good day, and then just in just a couple of hours, we were able to make some good contact. One of the camps we walked up actually had a um, had a business card of swag. They said they were going to be reaching out today anyway, um, and setting up some appointments to go down, you know, to the help center. So it was really really eye opening. And again, if anyone's interested in doing that, I would uh, definitely hit up Mike Wooten and see if he can help you with that. Um, and I think for now that will conclude my remarks. Cassandra, thanks again. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vice Chair. And uh, I, uh, you know, just wanted to echo your, um, you know, my appreciation for your participation in those events, you know, rallying the troops, uh, getting folks to show up at the senior center and kind of step behind the scenes to see what happens. Uh, going out with the hot team. I mean, you're you're embodying, you know, and and leading, you know, by example, um, you know, living with the community, which is so awesome to see, and uh, setting a high bar, you know, for uh, for the future here. So that's uh, that's great. And and Cassandra, I will I will let you go. Um, you gave an awesome report tonight. Um, I'm not going to grill you with any questions. My esteemed colleagues, uh, as as always, you know, the it's sort of the the curse of the chair, right? Everybody else asks all the good questions, and you're like, well, nope, not that one, not that one. <laughs> but you did a great job. Just want to thank you for that. And uh, I guess we'll turn to uh, Mike Mori. And Mike, it's uh, it's great to actually see you. Um, you know, at, at least your face, because normally you're sort of behind the camera all the time. So it's, I hardly recognized you when you were there. It took me a second to, to refresh. <laughs> that is true. Um, <clears throat> so good evening, commissioners. Uh, I'm Mike Mori. And I, as I was going to say, if you don't recognize me, it's usually because there's a camera in front of my face. Uh, I'll be presenting the cultural arts division today. So we'll start with Ace. Uh, Donna Lee. Apodica, if I said that right, is our current online virtual gallery artist. Guests can visit the museum's virtual gallery page to view Donna Lee's paintings. Next slide, please. Moving on to community outreach. We have been busy filming the rele and releasing new episodes of the Park Adventure series. In episode number six, we traveled to John McGee Park. This park was recently renovated with new playground equipment that boasts an Old Town Temecula theme. Kent Hennegard Memorial Park was featured in episode number seven. For episode number eight, we traveled to Paloma del, park, uh, Paloma del Sol Park, which is one of Temecula's major sports parks. Filming for Around and About Temecula episode number 24 has begun, and we anticipate finalizing and releasing this new episode by the end of the month. Next slide, please. Heading on over to special events, 
Over spring break, we spread some Easter magic to 350 Temecula residents' homes who pre-registered for our Get Egged event. Each home received about 50 filled plastic Easter eggs and 25 prizes. The five-day teen Easter giveaway for Temecula residents posted on our Instagram and Facebook accounts gave out 25 awesome prizes to our lucky daily winners. Teens had to answer trivia questions for a chance to win a TV, boogie board, and more. Next slide, please. Dancing on over to the theater. Throughout March, patrons were invited to the month-long celebration of National Women's History Month, presented on the theater's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next slide, please. The theater also premiered another free online concert from our legend series, Deja Vu, a musical retrospective of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. This performance streamed on online from Temecula's stage and reached 7,337 uh, patrons on Facebook and 180 views on YouTube. Next slide. Temecula Valley, oh. Temeca Valley Museum reopened to the public after a seven month closure due to COVID-19. The museum was open for nine days in March and served 306 visitors. Staff continues to adapt the monthly second Saturday events to an at-home online format. The museum traveled virtually to celebrate Bali last month with recipes, crafts, cultural facts, virtual tours, and another free live streamed art lesson provided by Bigfoot, Bigfoot art classes with 20 participants. We virtually uh, celebrated Women's History Month with links featuring history, art, culture, and food. And finally, Public Works installed the second student mural at Sam Hicks Monument Park, celebrating the accomplishments of women in history. That concludes my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Short and sweet. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, Vice Chair. I knew you were going to go reverse this time, so I was ready. Um, no, uh, no questions, Mike. Thanks for the report. Super cool to see uh, Donna Lee's artwork being showcased. She is actually one of my good friend's mom and relocated from Northern California here a couple of years ago. And um, has always tried to find a way to get her artwork showcased. And I knew she had submitted some stuff and I tried to put her in, in contact with stuff. Uh, this is pre-COVID, did not know that she was being featured. So I'm gonna have to share that slide with, uh, with my friend and let him know that his mom's artwork is out here. And I'm sure she's thrilled to be able to showcase because she, she's very passionate about that. Um, and then again, it seems like we're hitting this every month, but our, our social media stats and our, and our views on Around About Temecula just continue to, to remain impressive and engaging. Um, I, I think there's even a bigger trend kind of coming up on some of the Instagram stories and just the way they're doing that is, is, is really good. I think connecting with, with the community on that. Um, and, uh, Mike, I'm, I'll see you on Friday, looking forward to, uh, representing the commission and, and filming a segment of a, a roundabout Temecula and giving a little bit of info on how people can uh, be more engaged with this particular commission. So appreciate you guys reaching out uh, on that and look forward to uh, filming on Friday. And with that, uh, I'll conclude my report. Uh, Vice Chair, bef before you leave, and I see you, you can probably see Bad. She looks like this proud mama, right? <laughs> first, first of all, great job, Mike Moore. And, and anytime you're mentioning social media, but I, I just wanted to take a, a second. Um, so I think you, most of you remember that this commission is really kind of responsible for around and about Temecula. I mean, it, you know, Mike and Bea and Jeff and everyone are kind of you know doing it but the discussion kind of you know the idea was birthed at the commission level when we were talking about wow we wish that others could um you know experience everything that you know we're sharing and then you know i wish we could have kind of like this living breathing you know um recreation guide and wouldn't it be cool but it was kind of the commission who kind of said, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? And we were thinking it, but to have, you know, this, this body say, 
Hey, we this would be something that the community would really like. And that gave us the cover to, you know, unleash Bea and, and, and Mike and then Jeff. And so, uh, so you mentioned it, but I, 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 you know, I wanted you to take kind of like a little, quick little victory lap, right? Because, you know, you, you're responsible for the success as well. So I didn't want that to go unnoticed. Great, thanks director. And uh, thank you, Adam, for the comments. And we'll move on to uh, Commissioner Sizemore. Thank you, Chair Levine. I wanted to, I was had it down for my, my notes today to just uh, give praise to the social media presence for TCSD. I, I keep telling my friends, I'll stop sharing. I'll stop sharing everything on Facebook all the time. But then like, you know, another day happens, another social media post and it's relevant, important information and I got to share it. And it's, it's just, it's great. And Around and about Temecula, I, you know, I've driven by Paloma del Sol Park for years, and I didn't know it was nine acres, nine acres of sports field. That's amazing. Watching around and about Temecula, and I, I probably came into watching the series probably around halfway through, maybe around in the teens. So I missed some of the early ones, and. This past month, I started making it a point for our wandering Wednesdays to visit different parks because, you know, we visit the parks that are near our home and we get our, our routines and uh, we tend to visit the same parks in our family. So I decided I was going to visit some new parks and we visited Sunset Park. I love that park. I was a band geek. I love that park it, with all the musical instruments to play there. And when I was going through the roundabouts, if I had watched some of the earlier ones, it was right there in one of the episodes. I'm like, I could have known about this park earlier. I'm so disappointed by that. <laughs> um, I also, I wanted to thank Tracy at the Temecula Valley Museum for letting me come down for the installation of the Women's History Month mural. I love being there and watching the students, the, just the pride in their face, the excitement and seeing their own artwork installed up on that wall. It, it's just, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to, to see them. And this month's artist, Charlie Lively. Oh my goodness, that, she, she's going somewhere. She's only 16. If you haven't been there to, to see it in person, it, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you. If I can chair, I'd like to add to what uh, Commissioner Sizemore said. Even though that was just a transition, we're gonna have a more formal unveiling coming up um, that you'll be invited to. Um, I believe it's scheduled for April 20th, but um, there were three generations of artists there. It was the grandma, the mom, and Charlie, and her baby sister. So, uh, and, and her dad came too. And just to see the pride on their face and to hear the stories of the first time she doodled, those are the community connections and stories that, you know, now we're the oral history tellers of that, that we get to see the birth of her career here. She's been drawing, painting. She was a student of um, Tony Morimarco. He has nurtured her, but she has innate talent, vision, and just innovation. One of the things that you should notice is when you see her artist signature, she puts her hand prints uh, like this. And it's just so unique. It's got her handprints on there, her signature and her passion is up on the wall for all of us to see and enjoy. And um, I saw people taking pictures in front of it. Um, you know, it's become a, a meeting place. So now um, every time, every month when we unveil a new one, the next one will be um, of the pandemic. And then in May, it will be uh, Japanese um, uh, flags. And we even have some sister city flags being sent to us by COZO that will be arriving soon. So it's going, the ripple effect is going far and wide beyond just our community. So thank you for being there, for listening to the stories. I get choked up just hearing, you know, how important the grandpa was that is no longer with us 
how he influenced her. So we're reaping the benefits of many generations past, and it was an honor to be there. So if you haven't had a chance to see it, um, be sure to take a look before it uh, goes or changes out. Yes, Thank I you. was a little pushy, and I asked if I could be there for the installation because it is just really so inspiring just to see the pride and hear those stories like Theo was saying it's it's thank you for letting me be there okay, you're, you're never pushy you guys are always welcome you're part of the, the team so it's extra hands extra heart so thank you for showing how much Temecula cares thank you Great. Thanks, Bea. Thanks, Kathy. And uh, we'll move on to Gary, Commissioner Adi. Thank you. Um, I won't ask any questions, so I'll, I'll allow Chair Levine to have some room to ask a question, because I noticed there haven't been a lot of questions on this one, so you got a good opportunity today. But um, I really wasn't even, Mike, thanks so much. What a, what a great, great presentation. And um, the roundabout Temecula um, got me thinking about some traditions and um, before, I, you know, then I, then I saw the um, Deja Vu band, which I loved them. That's my music and I want to be those guys. So I can't wait until we get to see them live here in Temecula. That'll be, be awesome to go to that. Um, but I, I was thinking about those, those parks and, you know, uh, Commissioner Sizemore mentioned Home and Soul Park, and I go back to coaching my daughter's Little League team when that park first opened up, right at, right at that park. Um, it was the park that my middle daughter and I would do our um, training for her cross country on the trail right in front of it. Um, you know, thinking of Ronald Reagan Sports Park with my, I brought my two-year-old, five-year-old, and um 14 year old to the park our tradition was we would teach them how to ride without their training wheels and my my secret is to use the the all skin softball fields to um, learn how to ride your bike so if you fall you're going to get skinned up but not as bad as when you're on concrete right so um i brought my five-year-old but as i was getting the bike out of the car I lost track of my two-year-old and it was one of those moments where I thought somebody had nabbed her and I'm, you know, going around the van and she was actually running the opposite direction around the van, you know, like three times before I stopped and there she came around the corner. But, you know, there's just so much um, tradition in those parks, you know, for our family who've been here, you know, 30 years. and. Um, it's it's amazing that you know it feels like just yesterday that they built Paloma del Sol Park or that they you know built the rec center and and it's just it's been a while and Bay I remember Sarah you know performing at a talent show in the outdoor theater at Ronald Reagan Sports Park and now she's out there helping with um, choreography so it's um it's fun to you know when Bay was talking about traditions and families and passing down tradition, um, you know, Temecula has given us that opportunity. And so I want to thank um, anybody that's been involved in that um, real special memories. So Mike, thanks for bringing out those memories tonight. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Gary. And uh, last but not least, Commissioner Chris. Thanks again, Mike. No questions on my part. Just wanted to say again, Get Egged was awesome. And kids really loved it. Um, I, I really loved it as well. <laughs> it's a lot of fun watching them run around trying to grab all those eggs in our backyard. Um, and it's really cool to see that the museum's open again and people are able to go visit. So thank you guys for all that you do. Thanks, Chris. And Mike, uh, really no questions from me. Uh, just, um, first of all, I wanted to, to thank uh, Don and uh, Tracy for, for Get Egged, you know, the whole team. I mean, that was such a cool thing. And I think uh, I think I sort of tag, tagged on to uh, 
you know, Chris had the comment last month about, you know, they were excited about it. And I was like, I don't, I don't know that we can do that. But then Don got a hold of me and delivered some eggs, you know, to our yard. And, and I know my wife, you know, I was like the hero for the day. So once again, Donna Damiak has bailed me out of, of something cool. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, Don and team for that. And um, the, the other thing that came to mind is the, uh, the Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young uh, concert, the virtual concert. The stat that caught my eye there was over 6,800 views, and that equates to 20 plus sold out shows, you know, at our Temecula Theater. And, you know, if you, if you just think about that for a minute, you know, had we not been in this pandemic, had you guys not thought outside the box on so many different, you know, occasions, right, that so many more people got to see a concert like that, that never would have had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, you know, once again, the, you know, hats off moment to the team here uh, for making those things come to life. So thank you. Fortunately, virtual programming has no geographic boundaries and it's not a one and done. If you were there that night, you missed it. You can see it over and over and over again. So yeah, exactly. that's the case with all the summer concerts and the, the, what's happening at the theater. And we're hoping to get some more concerts um, this summer. Hopefully, you know, once we get staffed back up and we can start having smaller audiences, social distance, so forth. Um, we're going to try to put some some concerts out just to start audience developing again, because as much as people want to come back, we don't know how comfortable they're going to feel. So we want to ease into it by maybe having some outdoor courtyard concerts, um, moving into the Merck, moving into the theater, slow roll. Um, I attended my first pod seating at a nature amphitheater at Mount Helix. First time oh, wow. there, beautiful, gorgeous, and I felt safe. It was very well handled, the temperature, the masks. And even at one point when I stepped away to go to the restroom, I forgot my mask and then I was just putting my shirt. It was just like, ah, you always have to carry one in your pocket. But, you know, nobody was too nearby anyone. And they said at the end of the musical, you know, there's no meet and greet. I'm sorry. You know, the, the program was all virtual. So it can be done. It's being done. And eventually we will get there. But me, myself, as an arts administrator and a patron, I felt that it was handled very well, seamless, and the pride and excitement on to see the performers. They were even wearing masks that were clear right here in the face, and you could hear them on the microphone. So they adapted, and they were still able to share their art in this time. So they had been re rehearsing for a year. So it was pretty amazing to go to a new place and to see the new normal in action. So thank you. I just wanted to share that live performance is not dead. <laughs> thank you. That's fantastic. Thanks, Bea. And uh, thanks again, Mike. I uh, really appreciate it. Great report out. And, um, and with that, I suppose we will move on uh, so the next item is our consent calendar, where typically uh, I would be asking uh, for a motion to approve the action minutes of March 8th. However, as I was uh, reviewing the minutes earlier, um, I noticed that in my notes, um, as compared to the action minutes that were recorded, uh, it, it attributed the motion to myself for the approval of the minutes. And uh, actually my notes recorded that that was Commissioner Adi. And so um, I wanted to ask if we could get the minutes updated to reflect that, and then we'll just go ahead and approve those, uh, review and approve those next month, if that's okay. Yes, sir, of course. We will amend that in the final and retroactively in the minutes before they are formally signed. Perfect. Thank you. No, thank you guys. There's always a lot going on and I wasn't sure if that was going to be a little petty thing, but you know, it is a matter of public record. So I would like it accurate. 
Shall we go ahead and vote to approve as a, with the amendment? I'm good with that if, if that's permissible. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and take a, a voice vote if you want to. Um, so, well, so we need a motion. For yeah. Okay. The, yeah, move to approve the amended minutes second. for last month's meeting. I'll second. Okay. There's a motion from Commissioner Audie with a second by Commissioner Vice Chair Ruiz. Can I have all a roll call favor. vote? Oh, all in favor. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that carries 5-0. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Bea. And uh, thanks, team. And uh, would it be appropriate if uh, once you guys generate those notes, you can send them to me, I'll sign them. And I have uh, envelopes here ready to send. Yes, absolutely. We'll get those minutes out to you tomorrow. Thank awesome. you. You guys are awesome. Make it so easy. So uh, let's see, moving on. Uh, Director Hawkins, do you have a report for us this evening? Hmm. Wow. Um, <laughs> seems like we've been reporting all along. huh? Um, so a couple of things, I guess, that will be on the uh, city council agenda um, tomorrow that may be of interest. Uh, Bea, I, my apologies for leaving <laughs> something off. Uh, one, one thing, um, it's coming, actually, the staff report was prepared by Public Works, but um, it's something that this uh, body acted on, and it's a recommendation to approve the uh, renaming of Aurora Park Ranch <laughs> um, of the community park to uh, uh, the sports ranch um, at Summers Bend. Um, we've had a discussion. Um, we appreciate the support on it, and that's coming at the uh, request of uh, Council Member Swank. So that's gonna be on consent um, tomorrow evening. Um, also, uh, I think under uh, Mike Wooten's wheelhouse, we're gonna have a request to an improvement amendment uh, to the agreement between um, um, the city and the district and SWAG, the Social Work Action Group. Um, and that's our street level homeless outreach provider. Um, and uh, Vice Chair Reese, you, you, you've seen them up close and personal, right? And you, you know the importance of what they do and they're, they're really uh, that, uh, that ex extra step and measure combined with our hot team. Um, and uh, all the other resources to, to truly make a difference. And that's gonna come um, at the request of the Human Services Subcommittee. And that's, uh, that's uh, Mary Edwards and, uh, and Council Member Alexander. So their support for that. Um, not necessarily our shots, but the impact um, we're going to, um, um, there's a request to approve the plans and specs um, to go out for a bid solicitation for the Ronald Reagan Sports Parks Restaurant. Now, this has been a, in our in our CIP, I, Mike, <laughs> seven years, <laughs> five, maybe even longer, right? So this is like, we've been waiting for this. And so finally there's, it's long overdue. And, and, and so that's, um, we're getting that process started. And then, um, and Commissioner Adi, you appreciate this. And, and, and the, the final item is gonna be, uh, a uh, request to uh, file a notice of completion for the mini pump track <laughs> and uh, and great project. You know, I think it's been kind of suggested that we're also exploring, the council will be considering exploring um, additional um, pump tracks, mini pump tracks um, based upon that success in the coming CIP process. Oh, something else, uh, just kind of not necessarily us, but there's going to be an item, um, I don't have it in front of me, but it's going to be consideration um, for um, kind of the um, um, having uh, council meetings in, in person, if you will, or, or in chambers. Um, I know, uh, I'm not sure if that comes at the request of uh, Council Member Alexander, um, but that is an item. Um, so there should be, um, very uh, robust discussion on kind of what that looks like. And as you know, we're kind of in the Zoom environment. 
what's uh, permissible based upon current guidelines, um, what the comfort is for the, for the, the entire council, um, wearing a mask, et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting for a number of reasons, not just for, um, you know, for, for council meetings, but as I think we've shared um, that commission meetings typically follow um, you know, the council protocol. And so once there's some type of clear or clearer direction regarding our, our council meetings, I think uh, you'll see commission meetings follow suit. So that'll be interesting and tuning, tuning in as well. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Unless you have any uh, questions left for me. No, good stuff as always. Thanks, director. Thank you. And let's move on to commission reports. Uh, we'll start with you, Chris. I had the privilege of going on a bike ride with Commissioner Audi and Council Member Schwenk. And we got to uh, ride the south end of Temecula. And it was just a, a great time, a lot of uh, discussion about uh, trail connectivity and future potential throughout the city. So it goes in line with what we talked about, I think either previous count, uh, commission meeting or a um, couple meetings ago, but it was just, a, it was a good experience and um, it sounded like it's something that we might do again in the future. So I encourage everyone who can participate to come out, up, come out and go for a bike ride. Pretty awesome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Commissioner Adi. Yeah, um, just real brief, I'll follow up on, on um, Commissioner Krzystowski's um, bike ride comment. Um, we were able to actually on that, that tour, we were able to tour several parks, um, you know, um, including the new Friendship Park to see the construction going on there. Um, so it, it's just, you know, when you're on a bike or when you're walking, you just have an opportunity to appreciate things a lot more um, instead of, you know, fighting the traffic, moving along quickly in your car. So uh, we were able to, you know, explore some safe routes too that, that um, the commissioner wasn't aware of on the south side of town. So um, it, it's something that, trying to work on in our um, bike coalition to um, advance some of those safe routes out to our community. And of course we have uh, a lot of lot grander um, goals in the future too, but that's, that's about all I have. Um, I, I did put up my celebrate trails and that's on April 24th. It's like opening day for baseball, except this is opening day for trails. And then um, of course, the month of May is bike month coming up. So we'll be able to talk about that at our next um, meeting. And um, I think I think there is going to be a groundbreaking for the Santa Gertrudis undercrossing, but um, I, may be, I may be jumping the gun on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that might be coming in um, bike month. So um, thanks for a great meeting, um, Chair. Everybody have a great week and a great month. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, just to follow up, when you said safe, was it safe, safe spaces? Are you talking about places to ride alongside traffic on the street? We're, we were talking, well, it could be a protected lane, which we didn't experience a lot of on the south end, yeah. but we experienced some trails like the trail going through the Greenway and Red Hawk. Um, we um, rode the, the um, current trail along um, the creek um, on uh, Malin, off of Malin Vale. And, um, you know, just some safer routes through neighborhoods that people aren't aware of. So instead of having to ride out on, Temec on Pechanga Parkway um, or Temecula Parkway right. on the class two bike lane, um, we tried to take some safer routes through calmer neighborhoods and things like that. Very cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, Commissioner Sizemore. 
Thank you. Uh, like I said earlier, I've been spending some time visiting some new parks and finding some real gems out there. Um, just reminded how blessed we are to be in Temecula with the amazing parks we have. Uh, Commissioner Adi mentioned here earlier, he was talking about the traditions our families have with the park. And it really kind of hit me at home last month. Um, my oldest son's at, in Salt Lake City attending college and we went to visit him for his birthday. And it was really important to him that we go to his park in Salt Lake City, that we go with him to visit his park. And he said that was just the most special birthday to be at his park eating lunch with his family like he would have been at home. And there's that tradition that was born here in Temecula that's uh, go, going with him and going out somewhere else. So I'm um, just really grateful to have the parks that we have here in this city. Thank you. Great, thanks commissioner. And uh, we'll wind it up with Vice Chair Ruiz. Thank you, Chair. Hey, Commissioner Adi, um, does my motorcycle count for bike to work day? Is that, that, does that qualify? Hey, I know bit? you, I know you bought an e-bike, so you're going to, no, I don't, you, I don't oh, have an e-bike. That's why well, you're going to, you're going to buy one. Yeah. So you can take a ride. <laughs> um, no, you know, all, all my notes that, uh, that I was going to talk about under my report, we actually addressed during the division reports. Um, I, I did have a question, hopefully I'm not jumping the gun on anything here, but, um, you know, we've talked even a lot tonight on how quickly things are moving and changing and progressing. Um, but I was curious with the anticipation of the color tier system going away potentially June 15th, has there been a discussion yet on 4th of July activities? It's, I know the summer seems far off, but it'll be here sooner than later. Um, and I know that was a, you know, a pretty hot topic last, uh, last year. Um, we were in a different state. I think than we are right now to begin with, but you know it's it's such a it, it's such a staple event for the city. So I, I just didn't know if any discussions had started happening yet on that. Yeah, uh, thank you for asking. Literally, uh, 2021 Fourth of July discussions actually began in 2020, <laughs> and um, and and it's been a regional discussion. Um, just so you know, probably in the second meeting in May, um, we'll be providing an update to the council, um, kind of, of events, you know, basically, you know, as the tiers are changing and what that looks like, right? And kind of going through that. I can let you know that uh, one of the recommendations, at least what we know now is to have um, a fireworks, um, event in some form or fashion, at least that's the goal. That was the goal after last year. Um, parades obviously are still kind of out of the question, um, you know, um, but this is a conversation also that we've been having um, with our regional partners. So I, I kind of helped facilitate a, a regional meeting um, just to ensure on a monthly basis to ensure that um, that we're all providing support, but also kind of um, speaking the same language. I mean, as guidelines are coming through, you know, we want to make sure that we interpret them the same way. So, um, so if you were to go to Lake Elsinore or Menifee or Marietta or all the way up to Riverside, right, that um, you aren't necessarily shopping for a different answer. We, are, we all coordinated and are on the same page. And so to that point, we've all been talking about fireworks <laughs> since last year, right? And, and we didn't want anyone to kind of just be out there and, and we check and, and we provide feedback. And so um, I think throughout the region, you will see um, a very intentional effort to um, find a way to yes with, uh, with the fireworks celebration. And so uh, more to come, but I just wanted to kind of respond to you right now. No, and and I, I appreciate that. Thank you. If if the color tier system is gone, why would why would we not entertain parades? Just curious. I mean, I, I understand that under the restrictions that might be in place on the color tier system, but should that go away and we are back to normal, air quote normal, I guess, but is why would we not be able to do that? Just curious. Well, I I think a couple of things. First of all, I don't want to um, speculate. I mean, so the color tier system may go
go away. That means that just a tier system may go away. Doesn't mean that a threat may go away and, and that there's still discussions about masks and gatherings and things like that. It's just that the color tier system may go away. So that's kind of borrowing tomorrow's issues. I can tell you right now that um, our focus continues to be health, safety, and trust. If there's any question about the health and safety and well being of not just patrons, but of staff, um, I'm going to err on the side of caution. So, what, as I kind of preface saying, what we know today and what we're saying right now is that um, a parade, not just in Temecula, but for the region, that's why I talked about all of us being on the same page are of the same mindset too. But at the same time, you know, it, it, and, and you, you bring up a fair question, but my, my counter is going to be this. It's very difficult sometimes to get applauded for all the things that we tried to do and have been doing throughout the entire, you know, um, COVID um, in every section of sports, um, senior male programs, events, and virtual. And then when we give um, what we're intending to do, it's, well, why aren't you guys doing this? Um, <laughs> and so uh, if there is a way to do it safely, I think we have the credibility and I hope we have the trust um, that we'll find a way, but, uh, but if not, then we won't. Fair enough. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Adam. Um, and I appreciate the question. I know uh, it literally came up for me maybe a day ago. Um, so um, I'm glad to know the, the thought, you know, the current thought. I'm glad to know that, that we're looking at it from a regional, you know, perspective and, and uh, that we're keeping, you know, the health, safety, and well-being of uh, not only the citizens, but the staff in mind. We'll see where it goes. That's all we can do. Um, let's see, for myself, um, I took the, the first kind of little family vacation, you know, getting out of Temecula for, for more than a couple of days. And I went, uh, of all places, to Utah. And uh, we had some friends that had a, a timeshare up in Brian Head. So we sort of launched uh, from Brian Head, but the idea was not really to go skiing, at least for us but to uh, hit the national park. So, you know, within a, an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and a half, uh, we were able to go to uh, not only one, but two national parks. And so I got my national parks pass and I was able to go to uh, Bryce Canyon, which I'd never been to before. And it was absolutely spectacular. Um, and also got a chance to go to Zion National Park, which was equally impressive. I'd never been there before. And it was just, uh, you know, fun to get out and do some hiking and things. You know, folks had masks on the, you know, the parks did a, a really nice job of, of keeping everybody, you know, safe, safe in a way. But I just wanted to mention that. Um, because, you know, for the first time, you know, and, and I'm generally uh, speaking a homebody, I've missed doing a lot of the activities here uh, around town uh, with things being uh, shut down, but it was, it was just nice to, to get away for, for a couple of days. And uh, I, was, I was inspired by Commissioner Adi's, you know, backdrop there about celebrating trails. And I was out there, I was on the trails and I, I was feeling every bit of my 54 years out there too. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, again, thank you, Director Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Bea. Uh, thanks, Erica, Mike, uh, the whole team. Really appreciate uh, the folks out there. You know, we had uh, some virtual attendees, uh, David Maddox, Katrina Thorson, Willa mm -hmm. Yvette, mm -hmm. we had Don. Uh, Tracy was out there, uh, little Tracy Quartz for a while. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, it's it's uh, it's not quite the same. We're almost there. You know, I, I hope to see everybody again uh, very soon. And and as uh, Director Hawkins says, we'll take our clues from the council. So with that. Chair, can I ask yes, that, we, that we adjourn in honor and memory of John DeGange, a former city employee that passed away 
um, recently. Uh, he was very instrumental in Lake Elsinore's development, ours, and Menifee. And I know that City Council adjourned in his memory, so if we could do the same, that would mean a lot to many of us. John DeGange, like a brother to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so with that, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn in the memory of John DeGain. Move to adjourn in memory of John DeGain. Oh, we have a motion. <laughs> Do we have a second? Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Vice Chair. So we have a, a motion from Commissioner Adi and a second by Commissioner or Vice Chair Ruiz. Almost forgot myself for the moment. And uh, let's have a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 With that, we will adjourn to the next regular meeting. The Commissioner Community Services Commission scheduled for Monday, May 10th. Thanks, everybody. Good night, all. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.